Greetings everyone and welcome back to another phone review. In today's one we are having a look at a sort of budget device. It is within a reasonable price bracket, but that phone is the OnePlus Nord CE 5G or the OnePlus Nord Core Edition 5G. A massive thank you to OnePlus once again for sending this phone out to me for review. I really do appreciate it as always. If you are interested in taking a look at the item on AliExpress, there is a link in the description below. It is not an affiliate link, just a standard link straight to AliExpress. I won't earn anything from any clicks or purchases, just want to make that clear for everyone and I'm also not being paid for this review all opinions are my own throughout this review as always and this isn't a sponsored video or anything but I do have a little bit of a bonus and that for the first time I have my own custom coupon code thingo courtesy of OnePlus I think you can use this on any OnePlus product on AliExpress but I'm not too sure I think you can hopefully, but the code is OP S'mores. I'll display it on screen for you all. And if you use that coupon code, you should get $5 US off the item, which I know it may not seem like much, but as I've said before, any saving is better than none. And since I like to go very in depth with my videos, there are timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment to skip to wherever you need to be. I know the length of these videos can be a bit ridiculous at times, but covering everything I can do on a phone does take quite a lot of time. This will be a premiere, so hello chat. I will try to make this video as enjoyable as I can. Okay, so let's take a look at the pricing for the OnePlus Nord CE on AliExpress. As of the 18th of July 2021, the OnePlus Nord CE standard package, which is the 8GB plus 128GB version, sits at around $420 Australian, which I'll display in all different currencies here. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. However, that is the blue void color. If you want the 8GB and 128GB version in black, then that will cost $434 once again, here is a quick currency conversion chart. If you want to quickly pause, then that is all good. Then you can also get the 12 gig plus 256 gig version, which is the highest spec one, and that will set you back $491 Australian. I'll also display the currency conversion chart for that one also. Feel free to pause once again. This does come in three colors. However, Silver Ray is missing. Blue Void and Charcoal Ink are the only ones available in this listing. But does color really matter though? Maybe. Blue Void looks cool. OnePlus initially didn't tell me what specifications or color I would get, they just picked it for me, but since I've already done the unboxing before this intro, I know what I have. They have sent out the 8GB plus 128GB configuration in charcoal black, and this is just the standard package. Like the other OnePlus phones I've reviewed, you can choose to bundle very accessories with the phone. Depending on what you pick though, the price will go up accordingly. Now the OnePlus Nord N10, which I've already reviewed and is carted just up here, if you want to go watch that one first, probably good to watch that first. That was the very first OnePlus device. I looked at on my channel, and it was definitely a great phone for the price. This Nord CE seems to overtake most of what the N10 had, and improves a lot on the things from that, and is only about $60 Australian more. So let's go through the complete specifications of the Nord CE and see what this phone packs. The model is the OnePlus Nord Core Edition or Nord CE in the standard package. The front of the phone is glass and has no listed glass protection. The frame and back of the phone are made of plastic. There is no IP certifications for this device, which is a bit unfortunate. The dimensions of the device are listed on screen, and the weight of this is only 170 grams, which is fairly light in today's smartphone standards. The system on chip is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 750G 5G, which is an octa-core processor, and it is based on an 8 nanometer manufacturing process, and this also has the Adreno 619 GPU on board. The RAM configuration is either 8GB standard or 12GB as an optional version, as briefed over earlier. Default storage is 128GB, or once again you can go to 256GB. Unfortunately, there is no micro SD card slot on this device, which is a shame as the Nord N10 had this. I wish I would have kept this, but... It is what it is. The display is a 6.43 inch, 20 by 9, 1080 by 2400, 90Hz fluid AMOLED display with an 84.9% screen to body ratio. We have a triple camera setup consisting of a 64 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 2 megapixel depth camera. With just a single LED flash, this setup has no optical image stabilization, only electronic image stabilization. The resolutions this can film in are listed on screen, however, don't get your hopes up, it is fairly basic. The front camera is just a 16 megapixel one and can film in 1080p at both 30fps and 60fps. The battery is 4500 milliamp hours and is capable of being charged at 30 watts using the included warp charger. The OS is Oxygen OS which is built on Android 11. As we know with OnePlus at this point in time now, this is basically stock Android. OnePlus has added their own nifty features and customization to make it their own and I've always been a fan of it. Our connectivity options are listed on screen with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, NFC, unfortunately no FM radio but what are you gonna do? We 
do have Type-C USB, which is good, and we also have a headphone jack, which is also really good to see. There is an underscreen optical fingerprint sensor, and also the Nord N10 has stereo speakers, but the Nord CE only has a single loudspeaker, but we'll test this later on. Now we come to the networks. This should support most major networks around the world, but here is the band list on screen for you all here. Please make sure you check with your network providers to make sure your country supports these bands. We should be able to get 5G at full speed. I'll test the speed of 5G if I can within this video. But since we have no micro SD card slot, the SIM tray just has the option to install two nano SIM cards in dual SIM configuration. In the box we get the phone, the charger, a USB cable, a case, a pre-applied screen protector, a SIM tray ejector, a welcome letter, quick start guide, safety information, warranty card, the spec sheet from the listing on AliExpress is shown on screen also. This is pretty much everything I've already covered, but feel free to pause this if you want to see any other specifications or details once again. And finally, the warranty. You get one year warranty with this phone. That is all the specs for the OnePlus Nord CE. So now let's take a look at the advertising for this and see if they are serious like the OnePlus 9 or having a bit of fun like they did with the Nord N10. And straight away, I can show you this. And now pretty much most of what you will see was featured in that advertisement, but I will quickly go over each picture briefly so you can get an idea of everything going on. The first two pictures are of the Nord CE box, which looks pretty fancy, and then the next one is what is inside the box, which we already know. The second image is comparing the Nord CE to the Samsung A52 5G, and it shows that the OnePlus is better in this comparison chart. I don't have the A52 or know much about it, but we can see that the obvious winner is the OnePlus. The next picture shows how hip and cool you can look while holding the Nord CE. It shows the brief specs and its tagline, a little more than you'd ex... Hang on, wait, 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 wait a second. Expect... Expect? Ex that's fine, no problems, moving on. Next is how light and thin the phone is, which is pretty nice, but with its plastic build, I hope it is pretty structurally sound. We'll see later on. Also, yes, it's back, the headphone jack. That rhymed. But they took the ability to have a micro SD card in this, but as I said, it is what it is. Time flies with the Warp Charge 30T Plus. A bigger battery deserves an even better charger. Warp Charge 30T Plus improves power transfer to bring Nord CE's large capacity battery from 0 to 70% in just 30 minutes. And by the time you throw all your makeup on, your phone will be charged. But you could have just charged it overnight. Silly. Anyways, Nord C 5G packs a massive 4500 milliamp hour battery, which means your phone stays powered longer. I love this picture, how this dude is just almost completely out of it, and his friend is messaging him, telling him to wake the hell up, and he's just like, nah, bruh, I sleep now. Shoot for perfection. What are these hooligans doing? Are they tipping an ice cream cone out and having a jolly good time? I think so. It looks like it. Shoot vertically, horizontally, exceptionally. Nord CE 5G features a triple camera setup, including a high-res 64 megapixel main camera, 16 megapixels more than the original Nord. Megapixels aren't really everything, but okay. The main camera's large aperture helps you capture more light and detail, even in low-light situations. How is this dude even standing on two skateboards? I have no idea. 64 million pixels chosen one by one. 64 million pixels? This is what we see on welcome phone listings. OnePlus uses it here. My god, that's good. AI that sees what you see. AI scene detection interprets what you're seeing and automatically adjusts camera settings like color, contrast, and exposure for brilliant, lifelike photos. Would have never guessed you could use chips to spell out words, but there you go. Fed up with flash? Yeah, us too. 
That's what it says. This picture does look pretty bright though, but hang on a second. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Are they taking the flash away? Oh, no, wait, no, no. It comes with a flash. Never mind, it's all good. And following up with that whole flash thing, Nightscape intelligently captures and manages several exposures in real time to produce sharp, detailed images in low light. We'll test night mode and see how it looks. Ultra wide when things get ultra weird. Why limit yourself to a standard lens? Why take a nap on a roof in the middle of the day? We don't know, but we do know this. Our 119 degree ultra wide lens helps you squeeze more detail into every photo. What I just said then is all featured on the listing. I didn't make any of that up. I promise. Selfie, set, go. 16 megapixel selfie camera for stunning social ready selfies. Why is this dude getting his face stopped on? And why is he wearing an adorable puppy dog shirt? I want one. Okay, time to focus. Both front and rear cameras feature portrait mode, giving you more creative control than ever. Automatically adjust focus to create eye-catching bokeh effects. Portrait feeling flat, add large fruit. Look, I'll just take a dedicated photo of the lemon just to make everyone happy. Smooth comes standard, whether scrolling, swiping, or streaming, our 90Hz refresh rate delivers 50% more visual information every second for a captivatingly smooth experience. That's just the 90Hz display with the moon shining like ice road truckers. Anyways, AI smarts, dragon speeds, okay. Qualcomm Snapdragon 755G mobile platform uses its onboard AI to power advanced processing, incredible graphics, and 5G gaming. Plus, up to 12 gig RAM makes sure every app flies fast and smooth. But those two aren't gaming, they're just laughing in a restaurant, I'll just agree with that. Step up to 5G with CE, that rhymed. Experience better than broadband speeds on Nord CE 5G. With up to 2.95 gigabits per second, you can download movies, series, and strange amounts of internet memes in just minutes. I did not improv any of that up. That is featured on the listing. Also, those lyrics right there. We need a catchy jingle for them. OnePlus, please make this a feature or include it on the phone. New features by the handful. Oxygen OS 11. Nord C runs on Oxygen OS experience based on Android 11 and introduces a bunch of new features. Then you can change it to dark mode and then you can change it to stencil mode. No, it's just the always on display doing its thing. One hand wonder. Whether texting with friends or frantically searching for an address, we've calibrated our UI to make one handed usage a whole lot easier. But this dude is carrying way too many pizzas. It just looks like they've got the picture just as he about dropped them all. And that is it. That was a pretty strange, unique, fun listing. So uh, let's just go ahead and take in all of what we have seen and read and unbox this $434 Australian phone and work out if this Core Edition phone is worth it or not. And here we have the parcel. This was delivered by DHL. How's this for service though? It took just over a day to come from China to Australia. That is absolutely amazing. But anyways, let's crack this open and have a look at the phone. And there we go. And taking the box out of the air bubble packaging, we have the Nord just here. Oh, and we have the same travel adapter that I got with the OnePlus 9 Pro. But taking a look around the pretty big box, I honestly thought it'd be a little bit smaller than this, but it is what it is. Uh, we've got Nord printed on here with some pretty cool looking holographic details going on there. On the other side, we've got OnePlus with the same holographic looking thing going on there. We've got a sticker at the top that says the model number, the color, the RAM configuration, and the storage configuration. Other side, it says the OnePlus Nord CE 5G with the same holographic, shiny looking font thing going on there. And on the back of the box, we have a big Android sticker just there. The OnePlus Nord CE 5G with the RAM configuration being 8 gig and the storage being 128 gig. It is in charcoal ink. The model number is EB2103, designed by OnePlus. And we do have the IMEI info as well as the serial number on this little sticker as well. Slossing through the black tabs, we can take a look at the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. And there it is. Now they did say that this is a very light and thin phone, and they weren't lying. That is very, very, very thin, but we'll get to that soon. In the box though, we have a little cardboard insert. We do have a free case included, which is always super, super nice. And that's actually quite a cool looking case. Inside of this little cardboard envelope, we do have what appears to be the safety information. And is that a sticker? Oh, no, there you go. Uh, dear friend, 
Last year when OnePlus Nord hit the market, we asked ourselves one important question. If the experience is outstanding, do the specs really matter? Today we're no longer asking that question. The appreciation received from customers across the world was a clear answer. That's why we're expanding the Nord family with yet another smartphone, but with the same focus on the essentials. OnePlus Nord CE 5G comes with carefully selected features meant to provide you with the fast and smooth experience you'd expect from us, all while being light on your wallet. To put it simply, it's designed to give you the most bang for buck, something we think it does seriously well, but that's ultimately for you to decide. Thank you for choosing us and welcome to the family. The OnePlus Nord team. Well, that's really nice of them to include this. But the whole bang for the buck thing may be a little bit debatable because there's other phones from other manufacturers out on the market at the moment that have cheaper prices and may include more specifications than this phone. It is debatable, but once I've tested this thoroughly, I will talk about this during the conclusion. Also, OnePlus stickers as well, which is always nice to see. The 30 watt fast charger just there, and you can see all these specifications printed on the charger. And finally, the gorgeous red USB Type-C for your data and charging needs. All right, let's take it out of its plastic and have a look at it. And there we go. And straight away, I can see the pre-applied plastic screen protector, which is always good to see. We've got the hole punch camera just at the top there, the earpiece grill, which goes just along the top, and a little tiny hole there, which would likely be for the sensor area. Around the size of the phone, we have our SIM card tray and our volume buttons just there. At the bottom, we do have a 3.5mm headphone jack, the Type-C USB port, which runs at USB 2.0 speeds, as well as the speaker grill and a hole for a microphone. On the other side, just a power button, no alert slider, unfortunately. And at the top, just a secondary microphone, and that is it. On the back, we can see the cool, shimmery, shiny charcoal ink color. Unfortunately, it is a fingerprint magnet, though, but that case will fix that problem for me. We've got our triple camera set up just there with our 64 megapixel main sensor, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and our 2 megapixel depth camera. OnePlus logo on the back, as well as some other information regarding the product. It is definitely light at 170 grams, and it's pretty thin. Just as a comparison, even though this phone is three times the price, the OnePlus 9 Pro, just up against it there, I guess you can sort of tell the differences going on there. And this is what I meant in the OnePlus 9 Pro review. Sometimes budget devices give you more, which is the headphone jack. Even though this issue doesn't matter to a lot of people anymore because of the USB Type-C to headphone jack adapter, the budget one includes it, but the premium one does not, and both models don't have micro SD card support either. The camera bump is definitely more pronounced on the OnePlus Nord CE as opposed to the OnePlus 9 Pro because, well, obviously this is a lot thinner. They've had to make a little bit of a compromise for the cameras. Otherwise, that's just a quick comparison between the two. As I said, this configuration of the OnePlus 9 Pro 5G is almost three times the price of this phone. And with that camera bump as well, we do have a little bit of rocking action just there. However, if we do put the case on, like so, that does eliminate that now. And even with the case on, it is still fairly thin for what it is. And of course, if you're thinking about purchasing this device, you may want to put the case straight on it when you get it. Also, the case has a little flap for the Type-C USB port, which is kind of nice. Popping out the SIM tray, we just have the little dual SIM configuration like so. I'm going to fill it with two SIM cards. I'm going to put a Telstra SIM as the main and a Vodafone SIM as a secondary and see if we do get 5G reception on this device. And because there's no IP rating on this phone, the SIM tray does not have a rubber ring around it, but they could have included one just in case. Now with the case on, I can protect the plastic back and the plastic body. And as I've already mentioned about build quality, plastic back, plastic body, glass front. All right, with the two SIM cards installed, let's go ahead and power on the OnePlus Nord CE 5G and see if this device is worth the money or not. There we go. Having a look at the bezel sizes, minimal chin just there, and at the top, pretty much no bezels going along. It is actually a really good screen to body ratio with the bezels just like so. We'll set this up, agree to the terms and conditions, and at the top we do have 5G, which is a bit strange because the OnePlus 9 Pro didn't pick up 5G where I am, the OnePlus Nord N10 picked up 5G, and this picks up 5G. So I'm not too sure what was going on there. As I said, I've used the same Tulsa SIM card in each OnePlus device. So a bit strange that we do have 5G. I mean, I'm not complaining. That's really good. But it's just the more expensive phone didn't have 5G here. But I'll go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi while I'm here. And there's the keyboard. It's just the standard Gboard, which is all good. Now, typing on the keyboard didn't provide any haptic feedback whatsoever. Hopefully, that is a feature we can switch on in settings. I won't log into my Gmail just yet on this device. I will do it later on. The 90 hertz is definitely there. I can see it. It's very hard for you to see on camera, but that is super, super smooth. Honestly, I can't tell the difference between 90 hertz and 120 hertz. It all looks the same to me. All right, it's time to set up the screen lock as well as the fingerprint. So even with the small little real estate that I have here on my thumb, it is recognizing it, which is good. 
all done. I'm gonna change the font to the OnePlus Sans font. We have the navigation gestures or back home recents. I'll choose back home recents just for now. And there we go, we're ready to rock. Oof, there you go. That was very nice, it was very uh, sophisticated and that's a very, very nice transition just there. And just having a closer look at the AMOLED display, it is super, super clear. And as I said, the 90 Hertz is definitely kicking in there. And just the colors are really vibrant. From what I can see so far, looks like a pretty good display. Unlike the OnePlus Nord N10, which had an LCD, this has an AMOLED panel. So the colors on this are gonna be a lot more accurate than the LCD. Now, as I've mentioned in the intro of this video, as well as the other OnePlus devices that I've reviewed, which you can watch up here. There's a little card just up here if you wanna watch them. They all run Oxygen OS, which is pretty much stock Android. It's just that OnePlus has added their own touch to this to make it their own. But swiping down, we have all of the quick shortcuts. I will try the torch, as always. That's actually fairly good. I don't usually shine it to the camera, but as you can see, that's actually quite reasonable. But we've got Wi-Fi, mobile data, Bluetooth, torch, auto-rotate, ring, battery saver, aeroplane mode, vision comfort, which will tune the display to go all nice and warm. It's always satisfying seeing it go from normal to that. Location, switch data card, do not disturb, NFC, nearby share, reading mode, dark mode, hotspot, zen mode, and screen recorder, all of which were included on the OnePlus 9 Pro, as well as the OnePlus Nord N10. And if you want more shortcuts in the notification shade, you can add an on-the-go shortcut, screencast, data saver, VPN, invert colors, focus mode, which is a part of digital well-being, bedtime mode, which is also a part of digital well-being, live captions, which I never got to work on the OnePlus 9 Pro. Now, I don't have much battery life left on this, but the plan is I'm going to update this, use it for a couple of days, and then come back to this review. So pretty much everything you see here is completely stock. Nothing has been changed or altered at this point in time. But as for the installed applications, if we swipe up, we've got Google Assistant, Calculator, Calendar, Camera, Chrome. Chrome, Clock, Community, Contacts, Drive, Duo, File Manager, Google Files, Gallery, GameSpace, Gmail, Google, Google One, Google Pay, Google Play Movies, Maps, Messages, Netflix, News, Notes, OnePlus Switch, Phone, Photos, Play Store, Podcast, Recorder, Settings, Sim Toolkit, Weather, YouTube, and YouTube Music. Okay, so in Settings, I want to go straight to System and then go to Updates, which it says there's an update available, and it does say battery too low, so I'll have to charge it up, but it says that it improves the face unlock experience, improves the charging speed, improves the system stability, the camera, and improves the front camera performance, reduce noise in dark areas of nightscape mode, and optimize the video call experience. It's only 195 megabytes, but at least it's an update, so I want to do this review with the latest update installed, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back. In the OnePlus 9 Pro video, I completely forgot to show how fast the fingerprint scanner is, and I'm happy to report that this is just as fast. Just like so. Even with just this small little area that I enrolled during setup, it's all still good. Now this part in the video may seem a little bit strange, but I just want to continue talking about the updates that I just installed. The update installed, all good, no problems with that whatsoever, however, I've lost 5G. I've tried the Telstra SIM by itself, the Vodafone SIM by itself. It's currently in its dual SIM configuration at the moment, but even just a single SIM by itself, I'm not going to blame the update for taking away 5G. I have a feeling it's because of where I am, which I do talk about further on later in this video. But I just wanted to clear that up, that after the update, that's what happened. But otherwise, after that update, I stopped filming and then decided to test this device out a lot more. So I'm going to show you all the battery test, and then we'll continue along with this video. I've got a screenshot here, but I left this on for 98 hours with 4G and Wi-Fi enabled, and it dropped from 100% down to 46% over 98 hours. And I can confirm that the fast charging does work, as I put this on charge at 46%, and it felt like it was at 100% within about half an hour or so. So the advertising is correct with this one. However, I did say 4G with standby, because once I stopped filming, 5G just disappeared and hasn't came back since. As noted before, I did do an update on this phone, so I could test this phone while it was completely updated, and 5G has just not come back. And unfortunately, because we're in a lockdown, I can't really test 5G at the moment because I'm bound to here, and I can't get 5G. It was getting 5G fine, but now it's not, so I have no idea. I've tried different SIM cards and everything, still nothing. So unfortunately, I won't be able to show you a 5G speed test within this video. But the network issues, I'll just blame it on Australia because where I am currently is just really iffy with 5G, but if I can somehow test 5G, I'll splice in any additional info here for you all. All right, so we'll jump into settings and I'll go through this as quickly as I can because most of this stuff you've already seen on the N10 and the OnePlus 9 Pro. So we'll just briefly go over this. Within Wi-Fi network, we have all our main options. If we go to SIM and network, it says we have smart 5G and my Telstra SIM is a 5G one, but Still nothing, unfortunately. What I'll do now is give this a call on 4G and see how it sounds. Testing the earpiece quality on the OnePlus Nord CE 5G, I've called the Vodafone SIM that's currently in this device, which supports VO LTE. So this is what it sounds like. 
And now testing the microphone quality on the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. I've called the Tultra SIM this time just to switch things up a bit. And I've already done the camera test as well, so I know the microphone sounds pretty good, but this is what it sounds like during phone calls. And as you just heard, that sounds pretty good. The earpiece and microphone are pretty clear, so no problems with that. Bluetooth and device connection are all just the usual, but I will try NFC to see where that's located. It did say on the little plastic wrap that it's about here. And is that the case? That is correct, NFC is located just there, which is all good. Within display, we have the advanced brightness, sleep, advanced, screen calibration, we'll just leave it as vivid, refresh rate, 90 hertz, leave it as 90 hertz, front display, camera area. You can hide this once again, but it just looks ugly. Just, nah, keep it full. Apps to display in full screen, which doesn't have any, but once we start installing some, they'll appear on this list. In scenes, we have vision comfort, reading mode, and dark mode, which they do exactly what they're intended for. Ambient display is the always on display, which looks a little something like this. Now they did say that this is primarily a one-handed device, however the user interface just feels exactly like what I've seen on the Nord N10 and the OnePlus 9 Pro, and so that's why you can come into display size and change it as per normal, so then you can make it easier to access the buttons and all that sort of thing. Status bar, I will show the battery percentage. You can also display the network speed and you can also display the network speed and come into the icon manager and choose what is to be shown on the status bar. Customization is the usual OnePlus customization where you can change the accent color, the system icons, the icon pack and the font. The canvas, I'm gonna try this again because it didn't really work last time with Ripley. I'm gonna try it with my face this time. So that's what it looks like. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Uh, no, just no. I'm sure it would work better with someone that looks a lot more handsome, but uh, there you go, that's that mode. Wallpapers we can quickly just go through. See, look, lemon. It said something about large fruit in the ad, so I did. Big lemon. But we've got this wallpaper, this one, this one. Were these all on the N10 and the OnePlus 9 Pro? I'm fairly sure of it. They all look pretty good. In sounds of vibration, all the usual stuff within here. We have the audio tuner, do not disturb, earphone mode, live caption, which never worked for me on the OnePlus 9 Pro, but that's okay. The phone ringtone, default notification sound, system sounds, and touch vibration. I'm going to have that on. Buttons and gestures, we can change the buttons at the bottom to a navigation bar, which I can do so like so, but I'm old school and I'm just not quite ready to move on to navigation just yet, so I'm going to just stick with see what I've done? I don't know what I've done. So I'll just stick with the back home and recents like so because that's just much easier. And you can do all the usual shortcuts in the navigation bar customization to just press and hold to open something up. Within apps and notifications I'm not going to go through the app list because I think you all know that this is pretty much stock Android with a couple of OnePlus apps added to it. I've shown it on the N10 and the OnePlus 9 Pro so I don't think I need to go through it here but you can choose notification settings within this menu. Screen time which is 43 minutes today. There you go. Default apps, app permissions, data usage control, wireless emergency alerts, and special application access is all within this menu. Security and lock screen. We have the security update as the 1st of June 2021, which is good. We've got the screen lockers pin. We've got our fingerprint setup. But we can do the face unlock. And I'll show you this time around if you'll be able to see what it does here. See? See what it's doing? If you can. It's face not detected. That's not really nice. There's a little smiley face up the top. There we go. Do that again. That was fast. Beautiful. And there's also personal security listed within here as well. Privacy is all good. And in the OnePlus 9 Pro video, I mentioned about the ads within here. That's to do with Google and not OnePlus. So that's all good. Location is off. Battery we have talked about. And it just dropped 1% just then. Storage, 128 gigs with 18% used already because I've already done the camera test. Accounts, you can add a Gmail or a OnePlus account or whatever account you need to. I will do this later on. Digital well-being and parental controls you want to give this to your kid to use, feel free. You can set up stuff in here. Or if you're using your phone too much, you can set up your digital well-being just within here. Google services and preferences, which is all just the usual stuff. In utilities, we've got quick launch, parallel apps, app locker, scheduled power on and off, pocket mode. That has come up. Uh, I'll show you pocket mode. There we go, pocket mode. So if the sensors are blocked, then it will do, well, sometimes it will. There you go. 
Sometimes it'll just do that and then you have to press a button to unlock the phone. Uh, we do have OnePlus Switch, so if you have an older OnePlus device or another brand, you can use the OnePlus Switch application to transfer all your information from one phone to another one. And we have Quick Reply in Landscape as well. In System, we have Accessibility. We have all the default options, which we have seen on previous devices before, like font size, display size, magnification, remove animations. We could do that, but I'll leave it. Power button ends call, vibration and haptic strength, live captions, all that good stuff in here if you require any of this. Language is an Input. We have the standard Gboard as well, which is all good. Date and time, backup, reset options, OTG storage is currently off, experience improvement programs, which I haven't gone into, multiple users, RAM boost, we'll just leave that on, system update, we're all good in that department, and power off. So you can just switch the phone off from here if you want to. And now about phone, we have the main specifications just listed on screen. Then we have the name of our phone, the Android version is 11. The build number, model is EB2103, legal information, and in status, it shows everything we need to see, phone number, signal, all that stuff. We're still stuck on 4G, unfortunately. And the Oxygen OS contributors are all listed on screen. If you made it onto a phone, well done. So there you go, that's everything in settings. I know I went through that very quickly, but I just didn't want to spend so much time on the settings since we've already been over it before. And I just wanted to show a couple of the main features within settings. But I think at this point in time, I want to jump straight into the camera. Once again, this was featured on previous OnePlus phones. This has obviously cut down quite a lot from the OnePlus 9 Pro since that was a flagship and this is more of a budget mid-range device. We do have the ultra high-res mode where you can capture photos at 64 megapixels, but you cannot zoom in 64 megapixel mode. But at the top, we have our options for a timer, flash, to make it full screen, the 64 megapixel toggle, and then settings, which shows the settings for Ultrashot HDR, Smart Scene Recognition, Mirrored Selfie Photo, High Efficiency Video. I didn't put this on again. I should have done. Custom Modes, Ultra Wide Lens Correction. I have this on, but it kind of doesn't work. You will see in the video test. I didn't put the watermark on either because honestly it's kind of pointless, but you can do time lapse, panorama, slow motion at both 1080p and 720p. However, 720p is 240 FPS, 1080p is 120 FPS. Video modes are 4K, 30 FPS, 1080p, 30 FPS, and 60 FPS. Unfortunately, with the ultra wide camera, you can only shoot 1080p at 30 FPS. Anything above that, you can't capture video with the ultra wide camera. But 4K 30 FPS, you can zoom in and out, that's all good. But once you bump it down to 1080p at 30 FPS, then you can now do the ultra wide camera and the two times digital zoom. Then you can bump this up to the 10 times digital zoom. Within photos, I've done most of the shots in 64 megapixel mode, some in ultra wide, portrait. I've done pretty much everything you'll see in the camera test. Portrait mode which does kind of work, sort of. We've got a two megapixel depth camera, which honestly just use the main camera. I'll talk about this more after the camera test. Then we have nightscape mode, which you'll see in the camera test and pro mode, which I never use, but it is here if you want to use it. And I'll also let you know that HDR is available on both the front camera and the back camera, which is good to see. But switching to the front camera, looks a little something like this, and you can do portrait mode, 1080p, 30fps, and 60fps within video. You can't do slow motion or anything like that, no night mode with the front camera, but as I said, HDR is on for the front camera. And that is pretty much everything that's in this camera application. So let me go ahead and splice in the photos and videos I took with the OnePlus Nord CE, and we'll see if the camera hardware included is good for the price. Sorry, before we go into the camera test, I am noticing a bit of battery drain happening, and all I've done is pretty much just go into settings and shown a couple of things here and there, and it's dropping just a bit faster than I'd like. But when we go into the gaming test, I'll reassess this and see what it's at.
Let's start the video test with the ultra-wide camera. This is 1080p at 30fps. If I just move it around, there's a bit of distortion going on. Even though there is a setting that supposedly switches this off, there is still a bit of distortion going on. Sorry for people with motion sickness. I uh, hope that's all right. The sky and the faraway aircon. Now we can toggle normal, then two times zoom, and then 10 times digital zoom. And you can see the EIS working. It's just sort of going around in a circle, but no, it's working, it's working, it's all good. Okay, so the main camera test is in 1080p at 60fps. You cannot do ultra-wide at 1080p 60fps. You can only do ultra-wide at 1080p 30fps, if that makes sense. It should do. Anyways, there's autofocus going on there. Uh, HDR should be on, I think, by default. Should be. The flowers, we'll see if we can blur the background a little bit. Uh, a little bit, yeah. To me, it looks a little bit too sharp, but for a $400 device, it's... It's reasonable, it's good. Yeah, it looks good there. And these three Muppets as well. Uh, still haven't found good names for them. He just doesn't really look the best. He doesn't look happy at all. Even 1080p 60fps does have EIS, which is good. Brick wall pan just like so. It's pretty smooth. The sun's decided to just come out at the wrong time. Because now everything's going to look a little something like that. Lemons are dangling and there's a rotten one and it's all got to get cut away soon because too much of it. And the sky in 1080p 60fps. And there you go into the air. Oh, that was very, very smooth actually. That's eight times digital zoom. There you go. And that's what that looks like. Okay, this is 4K at 30fps. We cannot do ultra wide or 60fps in 4K. It is just stuck at 30 FPS and it does look a little bit choppy. Autofocus is working. Oh no, EIS is working fine. Back to the flowers as well. Looks a lot better in 4K, obviously. 60 FPS just looked a little bit too sharp, just for my liking anyways. Yeah, that's good. Muppet number one, Muppet number two, and Muppet number three. I honestly didn't ever think of showing these in videos because just didn't think much of them. I thought Stuart would be more than enough. These three have always sat here. You can tell. 4K brick wall. Does it look good? I think it looks good. I shouldn't be questioning it myself, but yeah, it looks good. Random bolts. No idea why they're here, but they're there. Stuart looking pretty reasonably happy. Didn't take a few weeks, took a couple of days. They're pretty much at the ground, pretty much. Sky looking pretty nice. And then digital zoom to the aircon at 4K at eight times digital zoom. And you can see that it says Breeze Air, and you can kind of see that it says Panasonic just there. And yeah, EIS is definitely working. That's for sure. There's Ripley. Hi. Boo. It's okay. She just really doesn't like it when I'm outside. Yes, the bird shit's still there. Testing the OnePlus Nord CE front camera at 30 FPS. This is what it looks like. EIS is on. HDR supposedly is on as well, but I'm not too sure. I can't guarantee that. It said HDR when I was taking photos. Doesn't look bad. A little bit choppy on 30 FPS. 60 FPS is a lot better. You'll see. Testing the front camera quality of the OnePlus Nord CE at 60 FPS. It does have EIS, that's for certain. No jelly movement here. There's Ripley with the front camera at 60 FPS. She just fell. All right, so you've just seen the photos and videos that I've taken with the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. First thing I wanted to just say is the depth sensor, while being a two megapixel one isn't really the best thing in the world, it does work. You can pull off some decent depth effects, but I always find that just by using the standard camera, you can actually achieve 
really good depth effects on their own anyway. So instead of the two megapixel depth camera, I think they should have put a telephoto camera in this instead. But if you think about taking portrait shots, honestly, just use the main camera. It does a fantastic job as it is. Main camera itself is actually fairly good. I had no problems with that. Everything works on that. Everything's nice and sharp and the colors are all very vibrant. I took the majority of these photos in 64 megapixel mode and a few of them should have auto HDR on as well. And the ultra wide camera does work fairly well. It is a little bit grainy when you take some ultra wide shots. It does get a little bit sort of lost in some areas, but it's okay. However, when you get to video mode with the ultra wide camera, you can only film in 1080p 30fps with the ultra wide camera. You can't do anything above that. And I feel that the video quality within ultra wide mode suffers quite a lot. With the main camera, the video quality is quite reasonable for what it is, but I have a feeling if you installed something like open camera or something like that, you might be able to get a lot better video quality out of the OnePlus Nord CE. And don't get me wrong here, 4K 30fps looks pretty good. 1080p 60fps looks a little bit too sharp and 1080p 30fps is just average sort of thing. Like the OnePlus Nord N10, it's pretty good for what it is. And the selfie camera, isn't too bad either. That had the auto HDR on as well and 1080p, 60fps and 30fps, there's me there, obviously, um, worked quite well. 30fps is a bit meh, but 60fps is actually quite reasonable. But the front camera is quite fine. I don't expect it to be flagship quality, but for what it is, it's definitely reasonable. And portrait mode with the front camera does work pretty well. And night mode as well turned out fairly good. I took a couple of photos of the moon and that definitely did brighten them up. That's ultra wide as well, by the way. And the lemon tree at night with the LED flash on, you can barely see it, but hey, it's all right, it will do. For most people's needs, this camera setup will be quite sufficient. However, as I said, the two megapixel depth sensor, I feel should have been replaced with a telephoto one. The ultra wide performance isn't exactly the best, but it will do. But as I said, if you install open camera or something like that, you might be able to push a little bit more quality from these cameras. Now that the camera test has been completed, we can go ahead and start opening the other applications that we need to test. I've already put my Gmail on this and put a couple of games on here. I've only put Ark Survival Evolved on here and Genshin Impact because I think they're two of the most demanding games to show on this device. Anything lower than that, I think we already know is going to run perfectly fine on this. Most of the apps that are installed, I'm not going to be opening because we already know what they do. So I'm just going to be focusing on the main ones. We'll keep the gaming test till later. Camera test we've already done. So I guess we can open up Chrome and see how that performs just on 4G. I just want to see how bad it is on 4G. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Did it kick into 5G? No, it didn't. And unfortunately, I don't have much data left on my Telstra SIM, so we'll have to activate Wi-Fi. And opening up GSM Arena, we can have a look at all these specifications listed, which we've already been over, but I just figured I'd show them again. Why not? But everything is listed there, which we'll check in device info hardware as well to see if all of this is correct. I'm pretty sure everything will be. But for the browser test, I don't see any problems with this. And knowing this unit has 8 gigs of RAM and the pretty reasonable Snapdragon 750G, I don't think you'll have any problems with any internet browsing on this device. When I come back to testing games, I will use the pre-installed OnePlus gaming app to make sure that everything is all optimized. I also tested GPS location and maps with this and all seems to be absolutely fine. No problems there. That was tested on 4G. If you have 5G, it will obviously be a lot faster, but I had to just stick with 4G. Pretty much the rest of the applications here I've already tested in other videos and you all know what they're going to do. I'll open up YouTube and we'll play Costa Rica in 4K. Now the quality for this we can play it in 4K 60fps with HDR mode on and that is what I'm going to choose. If you want to watch this whole video the link is in the description down below for you all but it is a very great video to test 4K performance, the display performance and the speakers as well. So this is 4K 60fps. There we go. Oh, okay. Bit laggy in that department. We may have to bump it down then. We'll try it again in 1080p 60fps HDR mode on. There we go. That's a lot better. So unfortunately, 4K is going to struggle a little bit, which I think was kind of to be expected. 4K 30fps may perform a little bit better, but if you are pushing for 60fps, you might see some lag happening. But otherwise, 1080p 60fps looks pretty good. All the colors are very nice, and the display, once again, is very sharp. No complaints there. And everything looks very, very nice. Since 1080p is the native resolution for this display, I don't think you'll really need to watch any videos in 4K on this device. 1080p is more than sufficient at both 30fps and 60fps. So now the only thing to do before the gaming test is to test the speakers. So we'll go ahead and open up YouTube Music and we'll play BFG Division. And now this is in FLAC format or FLAC format. So this should be the absolute best quality. Once again, this device does not have stereo speakers, but we'll test to see how good the single loudspeaker is.
105.6 we got to. That loudspeaker is actually very, very impressive. Even though it would have been really good to have dual stereo speakers, that single loudspeaker alone is more than enough. And at max volume, that was very crisp and very clear. I'll go ahead and test the headphone jack as well, just to make sure that's all good. That sounds absolutely excellent. So I can safely say in the audio department, we are all good with the 3.5 mil headphone jack and that really beefy loudspeaker. Pretty good for this one, but now it's time to push this phone to its limits with the gaming test. So I'll open up the games app, and we've got Genshin Impact and Arx Evolve Evolved. There is instant games as well. What does this do? Instant games. Okay. We'll just play this and see what it does. Okay. It's like a little sort of play store. Uh, we could just try one quickly. Road Crash, just for example. Let's try this. Oh, okay. Hello. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I am guess I... Just Okay. Oh, okay. This is reasonable. I have no idea what I'm doing. I think I just keep doing this. Am I winning? Fifth. That sucks. Well, there you go. I didn't know that instant games was a thing. Maybe it was on the OnePlus 9 Pro, but I didn't see it. But yeah, you can play instant games. It's exactly what it does. And there's a pretty good selection on there of just random games. So if you have this and you're a bit bored, just go onto there and choose a game and off you go. But now in the settings for the gaming app, I'm going to put the graphics optimization on. And pro gaming mode, I think we'll just leave all that. I think everything is all good. Okay, so let's go ahead and play Ark. Before I continue, I just want to check the battery level and it is currently at 83%. So let's go ahead and bump up all these settings to maximum and just see how fast the battery drains. Playing these intensive games is obviously going to drain it quite a lot, but I was experiencing some battery drain beforehand, so we'll see what happens this time around. Okay, let's go. Well, first impressions are actually quite reasonable. Yeah, a bit laggy, but this is all at the maximum settings. It actually doesn't run that bad at all. With 8 gigs of RAM and the 750G that's in this, that's absolutely no problems. Oh, I just ran into a dodo. Whoops. Uh, hey, dodo. He's purple. Uh, I'll just leave him alone. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. I honestly thought performance-wise this would have been struggling a little bit, but it's actually running fairly smooth. If you look at the ground, it's fairly smooth. Up in the sky, very, very smooth. And even with all that detail going on, it's actually still not that bad at all. So, Ark Survival Evolved gets a pass from me. And we'll just maybe go up to a dinosaur here. Just have a squiz. There we go. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. He doesn't like me. Yep, okay. Well, that was quick. Now, I've only played Ark for three minutes. But the phone is getting a little bit warm, just around this area, which is quite normal. And the battery is only drained 1%, so it's all ordinary at this point in time. But Genshin Impact is what is going to push it to its limits. So I'm going to go ahead and play this, download the 8 gigs that it needs to, and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, it's 10 gig this time around. I thought it was 8 gig. Well, there you go. We'll just leave this. Okay, so I just left it downloading, and I can tell you now the phone is pretty warm. It is very, very warm going on at the back there. But it's still loading, and the battery's dropped down to 71%. 39 degrees it reckons it's at, which I still think it's a bit hotter than that. Obviously, the battery has drained because it was just on this screen continuously downloading data in the background. But once I get into the actual game, I'll try and play it for about 10 minutes or so and just see how much the battery dips down. So far, everything's looking pretty good. But the phone is getting warmer and warmer, I think. What's it at? 36. Okay, fair enough. Okay. It's pretty smooth. Oh, it's a little bit stuttery. A little bit, but hey, it's not that bad, actually. Let's use the joystick to move. There we go. I mean, yeah, on the OnePlus 9 Pro, obviously, it ran 10 times better because that's the flagship, but this is a mid-range phone, but it seems to be running pretty well. People have said that this is pretty much the most demanding game on Android, but I'm not too sure at this point in time. Someone will have to tell me if there's another one that's been released, another game that's been released that's more intensive than this, but I think this is pushing the phone to its limits, because as I said, it's still getting pretty warm, especially down the bottom now. 
is getting fairly warm, but we'll try and reach the town area so I can have a better look of what's going on. If it's going to start to struggle a little bit more or not. I would have loved to have seen what Genshin Impact would have been like on the N10, but it's definitely running good here. Go ahead and break my ankles. There we go. So now the battery is at 68%, 35 degrees. It's actually feeling like it's cooling down at this point in time. The battery drain that I experienced before is probably just something normal. Um, it's probably not going to be an ongoing issue. As I said, because I'm playing intensive games right now, it's obviously draining the battery pretty fast, but you can use the 30 watt fast charger to charge it back up pretty fast anyways. Uh, unless you're out and about wanting to play games, then yeah, you're going to see the battery drain and you'll have to use a power bank or something to charge it back up. While it's not running absolutely perfect, Genshin Impact is more than playable. This is absolutely great and it's just not a game for me unfortunately. All I'm doing is just walking around, but I'm sure if there's some more action on screen, we might see some of the frames dipping a little bit here and there, but otherwise, this is all good. This is actually really, really good. It'll be interesting to see the cooling that's implemented into the phone as well, if they've put a heat pipe in there or something like that, because this is quite a thin phone. So they have had to cut a few corners, but we will see during the teardown. But otherwise, I've made it into one of the castle area places, things, and yeah, everything's looking pretty much like that. So I think, all up gaming-wise, you'll be right with this one. 67% the battery life is at, a majority of that was taken away from Genshin Impact. Still pretty warm up here, as the motherboard's going to be situated there. Bit warm in the battery area, and the bottom PCB seems to be a little bit warm as well. But it's cooling down, so it's all good. But what I intend to do next is open up Geekbench. And with Geekbench, I'll run this, and we'll compare the scores to the N10. The spec sheet shows that this would be a better phone, but at the end of the day, this is all just numbers. The higher the numbers, the better. But we'll see what happens when we run the benchmark. Also, I forgot to mention at this point in time, the screen is getting pretty warm. It's not too bad, but especially up here where the motherboard is. So I have a feeling there might not be a heat pipe inside of this thing for cooling. It might just be thermal paste and then the frame that's relying on for any heat dissipation. But we have the results and they are like so. So I'll display all the other results just on screen here for you all. It does beat the Nord N10 in the single core score. But for the multi-core score, the Nord N10 just wins by a whole four points. From the Nord N10 to this performance-wise, it seems like they're both pretty much exactly the same. Even though this does have 8GB of RAM, as opposed to the 6 on the Nord N10, the Nord N10 is cheaper at the end of the day. It does have dual stereo speakers and an extra camera, but this has an AMOLED display, it's thinner, and I'd much prefer this over the N10 at this point in time. But it is interesting to see the results from that test. And for most people, all this is is just numbers. But as I said, the higher the number, the better. But the Nord N10 is very close to what we have on the Nord CE. And finally, I'll just check device info hardware to just make sure all the specifications are all good. I'm pretty sure they will be, but it's always good to just double check to see what's going on. The CPU is the Snapdragon 750G, as we all know, with 8GB of RAM. All the details for system. The screen is all correct. 8 gigs and 128 gigs, as we know. The cameras, we'll see if it says, yep, 64 megapixel and 16 megapixel front. It doesn't show the other two cameras, but they're all good, they do work. Battery, 4,500 milliamp hours. Thermal, we'll see what it's currently at. 37 degrees, 33 degrees. About 33 degrees would be the average, but that's a lot of sensors right there. Holy moly. And as for the actual sensors themselves, we have everything but a barometer. But otherwise, all the specs check out as we all knew. 65% battery life we're at now. The phone is cooling down, which is all good. But at this point in time, I think I've tested everything. I've looked over the advertisement, the specifications, gaming tests, speaker tests, YouTube tests, everything that I think I need to absolutely do in this review. Unlike the OnePlus 9 Pro video, I didn't do a teardown because that was a flagship. But with this, I'm going to tear it down because I'm genuinely interested to see the insides of this, the cooling, and all that sort of stuff as I discussed before. But as a pre-conclusion for this device, it definitely does improve over the Nord N10 by including the AMOLED display, making it a lot thinner and lighter, but it also takes away one camera. However, the Nord N10 just had a macro sensor and a depth sensor anyway, so that's no big deal. But I do recommend if you're looking at the N10 or the Nord CE that you go with the Nord CE. If you want to save a bit of cash, go with the N10 because that's still a very reasonable phone for what it is. I think this being lighter and thinner, and with the AMOLED display, that's its main selling points. The dual speakers, honestly, not a big deal, because that single loudspeaker is more than enough. But I will go very in-depth in the conclusion after the teardown, but pretty much, I think at this point, I've tested everything that I need to. If I have missed anything in this review, please feel free to let me know. I know I haven't done the 5G test. It is unfortunate, but it is what it is, due to the current circumstances. But I did see this pick up 5G reception right here, which is good, but I guarantee that later down the track, when I do another video on a 5G device, I'll make make sure to include a speed test within that. But otherwise, 
I'm going to switch the OnePlus Nord CE off and we're going to tear this bad boy down and see what the guts look like. And with this being a plastic back, all I need to do is just use this suction cup to just lift it up ever so slightly. I can slip my pry tool just underneath to get enough room to slice around the adhesive. And with the plastic back being removed, we can see that the camera bump, which is made of glass, is attached to the back frame. And now we can see the innards of the OnePlus Nord CE. Now I'm going to take out all the screws that hold down the plastic frame. Some screws appear to be different sizes, so make sure you keep these organized. With all the screws removed, I can take off the plastic frame. We have our NSC pad just there, as well as our LED flash, which just has a small little contact, which communicates with the motherboard just there. We also have some areas for the antennas, and that is pretty much it for the plastic frame. We have the 4,500 mAh battery just here, and we also have this nifty red pull tab on the battery, which is a bit of a shout out to the old days of OnePlus. And with it removed from the phone, there it is. It is a bit of a thicker battery. I thought it may have been a bit of a thinner one, but there you have it. That is it just there. Now taking a look at the bottom area of the phone, there is some mesh applied to the plastic frame for the speaker grill. I'll go ahead and show you the speaker, which just pops off like so. And that is it just there with the coin style vibration motor attached to this little plastic piece. But this speaker looks a lot more sophisticated than I'm used to, and probably what gave this the punch during the speaker test. The bottom PCB for the charging port has two signal wires, the underscreen optical fingerprint sensor, the headphone jack, and a couple of connections for the main board and display. Here is our optical fingerprint sensor, which worked fine, no problems, and you can see the code printed on the flex ribbon. The bottom PCB is just stuck down with a little bit of adhesive, and OnePlus has surrounded the components with some glue to help with any water that does get inside of this phone. I'm fairly sure that it's just some sort of glue that they've laid down over the main components, but there is a rubber gasket around the USB Type-C port, as well as the headphone jack. It took me a while to reassemble this area because the bottom PCB just wasn't fitting into place properly, but I eventually got it. It's all back into place now. So now we'll move up to the motherboard. I'll take the flex connectors off. There is some copper tape holding down the front camera, and that is our front 16 megapixel camera with no optical image stabilization. And there is a code on it that says sunny, which is kind of nice. Once I've removed the other signal wire, I can just pull it up from the frame. And there we go, we've only just got a dollop of thermal paste on the processor, which rests against the motherboard's metal frame, so unfortunately no heat pipes in this one, thus the reason why this got a little bit hot during testing. We've got our earpiece at the top, contacts for the volume buttons and power button, and finally we can have a look at the motherboard itself, and we have the three main cameras, which each have their own flex ribbon. We've got the top 64 megapixel with no OIS, the 8 megapixel ultra wide with no OIS, and just the little tiny 2 megapixel depth camera, which once again has no optical image stabilization. There's also some gaskets around these flex ribbons, which is good to see. So there is some water resistance in this device that OnePlus has implemented, which is good to see, but still try not to drop this in a pool of water. But it just goes to show how thin the frame is for this device. I didn't do a bend test on this because I was scared that it might break, but once I reassemble this, I might give it a slight bend to just see how structurally sound this is. But otherwise, that is the teardown for the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. Not a lot to report, plastic frame, plastic back, metal mid frame, no heat pipe or anything. So all is looking fairly basic, but there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this off camera, do a little bit of a bend test, and then we'll go into a final conclusion. I have reassembled the phone, it's all back together, it's all looking very nice, except I kind of damaged it, just there, during the teardown. Uh, but let's pretend you didn't see that, it's all good, it's fine. I've applied some fresh adhesive to the back, so that's all stuck down, and I just wanna do a quick bend test, and it's all still working. Yes, it's 4.24 a.m., I know. My sleep schedule is a little bit weird, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead, just give it a slight bend. Ooh, there's a bit of a snap there, but no, locks out. And from the front, oh, you can probably hear the adhesive cracking. That's because my adhesive is kind of low quality. But that seems pretty structurally sound. It was a little bit of flex that I noticed, but honestly, this should be fine. Just put the case on this and you'll have no problems. For a thin phone like this and being lightweight as well, it held up fairly well. So with that out of the way, let's jump into a conclusion. That may have killed it. All right, but let's jump into a conclusion about this sub $450 phone. That's in Australian as well, by the way. Like the OnePlus Nord N10, it's a great phone and will be suitable for anyone who wants a pretty stock, no-nonsense Android experience. If you can find this cheaper, then all the better. But at the moment, the prices are what they are, unless you use my $5 coupon code thingo. You get $5 US off if you want to use that. You don't have to, no obligation. It's just there. It's free real estate. Why not? Now in the box for this phone, we had that little card about the whole bang for buck thing. And honestly, it's not too far off. 
However, for just $365 Australian, you can pick up a Xiaomi Poco X3 Pro, which will do everything this phone can, except it's only 4G and only has an LCD. But it has a pretty great processor, micro SD card slot expansion, and a headphone jack. Other Xiaomi models are even cheaper, and there's some that are a little bit more expensive and will provide a little bit more performance out of this. But the $365 Australian Poco X3 Pro is basically fine for everyday usage. However, the MIUI that Xiaomi has on top of Android isn't for everyone, whereas the OnePlus is pretty much stock out of the box, and you only really just have some of the stuff that OnePlus has added to this to make it their own. There's also Oppo phones out there that have 5G that are readily available from JB Hi-Fi, probably Officeworks as well, for under $400 Australian also, which could be a good option if you don't want to wait for shipping. But if you insist on a 5G phone cheap, then the N10 or the Nord CE will be perfect for that. As I mentioned, I prefer this over the Nord N10 for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the AMOLED display on this is brilliant, and the smooth 90Hz is a winner over the 90Hz LCD on the N10. If you have this and the N10 side by side, you're not really going to see much of a difference with the display, but honestly, these days, I'd much prefer AMOLED over LCD. Even though this doesn't have dual speakers, the main loudspeaker is very good for what it is and performs better than the N10. Battery life is almost the same on both models. The battery drain that I experienced seemed to be just because of testing applications and leaving them on in the background, but otherwise, it's a solid performer. And the 30 watt fast charging is also a bonus. Out of the box, you get Android 11 on the Nord CE as opposed to Android 10 on the Nord N10. But hopefully the Nord N10 receives an Android 11 update soon. They may have already started rolling it out, but I'm not too sure. The optical fingerprint sensor on this as opposed to the rear mounted one on the N10. And finally, the build quality being very solid, but also a very thin and lightweight device that definitely packs a punch. However, with the build quality and being a pretty thin device, some corners have been cut to keep it thin, and that's removing any internal cooling. The phone did get pretty warm while testing, and even in normal day-to-day -day scenarios, it still got quite warm. The thermal paste and the metal mid-frame in this are all that's cooling the Snapdragon 750G, but honestly, it's not that much of a problem, as all phones get pretty warm, it's normal. But this just got a little bit warmer than most phones, that's all. No official IP rating, but there are some efforts made by OnePlus to give it some water resistance, which is good to see, but still, be careful with this, don't drop it in water, and make sure you put the case straight on this phone if you do end up purchasing it. The camera department is good, and I don't have a problem with the main sensor, but the ultra-wide isn't 100% perfect, and it's a fairly low-end ultra-wide camera, but it does the job. But the 2 megapixel depth sensor, I think, is a bit of wasted space. A telephoto lens would have been perfect in this, as a 2 megapixel depth sensor really just doesn't do much else than the main sensor can pull off. Like, for example, the left photo is flowers with the main sensor, right photo is the flowers with the depth sensor. The photo taken with the main camera just looks a lot more natural than the forced sort of depth perspective that's going on in the right image. They can fit a bigger camera in this phone, as you've seen during the teardown, and it's just my opinion that a telephoto lens would have really been good instead of the 2 megapixel depth sensor. Removing the micro SD card slot may not be a deal breaker to some, but it's something I feel should have been included when a cheaper Nord N10 has it, and this having a little more than you would expect is a bit disappointing. You can opt for the 256 gig version at almost $500 Australian if you want more storage. However, if this had support for a micro SD card, you could chuck a 128 gig micro SD card in this for about $12 or something like that. And it's not that much of a deal breaker, but it's worth mentioning. One year overseas warranty can be a bit difficult, especially in Australia, but I don't think this should be a problem in the long run. The included charger will have a travel adapter for your country, which is fine, but I really would have liked a native 30 watt Australian charger with this to really take advantage of the fast charging instead of having the charger, the travel adapter, and just having a bit of a janky setup. I know there's proper, well-built travel adapters out there. But once again, that's just a little nitpicky thing from me, so that's all good. All in all, at the end of the day, as a consumer standpoint, this is a good phone, but some people just want the cheapest 5G phone that they can find and go with that. OnePlus isn't really big in Australia, so this is more catered towards people in other countries. If you want a phone with decent battery life, a great AMOLED display, pretty good main camera, and a thin and light design, then absolutely, go for this. But if you need micro SD card support and don't want to order from overseas, then you can look at something from Oppo. Xiaomi has to be ordered in as well, but their prices are extremely cheap, so I think it's justified. Like the N10, this is great for what it is, but it has a few downsides in some departments. In my opinion, this would be the best budget OnePlus device to go with, but at the end of the day, it consumer may want different features and not care about 5G, so really it's just how much you want to spend and how many features you will actually care about. With OnePlus now establishing a long-term partnership with me, I hope to have my hands on a Nord 2 soon, which will be very exciting to test and review, and maybe compare to this, but I'm not sure when that's going to be. Probably after I publish this review, I'll get sent out a Nord 2 to review, so that'll be something to look forward to. There you have it. 
that is my complete full review of the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. And once again, a massive thank you to OnePlus for sending this out to me for a review. I always appreciate it. I was not paid for this review either. All opinions were my own throughout this review. And if you are interested in purchasing this device, there is a link in the description below. It is not an affiliate link, and I will not earn anything from any sales or clicks. But keep in mind, there is my own $5 US coupon code thing you can use, which is... OP Smalls, I'll display it on screen here for you all. As I said during the intro of the video, it may not seem like a huge discount, but honestly, any saving is better than none. But I'm pretty sure I have covered absolutely everything I can about this device. Once again, I do apologize for the whole 5G thing. As I'm filming this outro, we've only just really got out of lockdown again, so I haven't really had a chance to go out and try it again. I will test it in the next couple of weeks, and maybe leave an update in the pinned comment. Otherwise, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you found this review informative as well as entertaining. I try my best as always and if you did make it through the whole entire video thank you so much for that but if you did use the timestamps to skip to wherever then that's absolutely fine that's why they're there please take care stay safe and continue being good people and i'll see you all in the next video which will be that absolute train wreck of a video that i mentioned in my last community post stay tuned folks and i'll see you next time if you like this content feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't Thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.